Welcome to the Reality Creation Podcast. I'm your host, Jackie Beam. Today's podcast episode is a clip from my HiWAP Business School course, which is a 12-week audio course for business owners and also, you know, anyone else who wants to learn these tricks. But uh, it's a course for people to get profitable without having to sacrifice their dignity or be someone they're not. Basically, teaching it teaches people how to align their uh, business strategies with their own energy. And so there's a lot of client attraction stuff in there and a lot of building your business to match your own vibe type of stuff. But today's podcast episode is from lesson two in High Watt Business School, where I talk about models of reality and how the universe is always going to kind of operate uh, in a certain way. And so not only do we align ourselves with universal laws, the way that the universe is naturally working, but we also get to kind of de decide on some of our own laws, our own beliefs about how life is working, how the world is working, how our business works. And so this is a lesson on some of the you know, the personal laws that I chose for myself in running my business. And you kind of have an option as you listen, if you want to align with these laws as well, in my opinion, your business is going to be very successful when you align with them. And so, um, I always tell people you can take them or you can leave them. And then I also encourage you to create your own laws of how the world is operating. You know, at the end of the day, the world is going to be working. However, you think it's going to be working reality creation works. However, you think reality creation works. You get to kind of set up how it all works. And so this lesson from High Watt Business School walks you through really constructing your model of reality that's going to make you the most successful. So I hope you enjoy this. Again, it's an audio. So those of you who are watching on YouTube, you're going to see a little icon and not a video, but uh, nonetheless, it's still great information, really helpful stuff. And I hope you enjoy it. First off, what is a model of reality? In a nutshell, a model of reality is the way we view the world. So our model of reality is the way we think it all works. When I'm doing energy work on a client who's having certain limitations or certain experiences in their life, the first thing I do is I zoom out and I ask, how does this person think the world is working? right? I, I look at a person's energy. I say, okay, how does this person think the world is working? What is it that they think happens or happens, like goes on? How does it work according to them? And sometimes your model of reality is empowering and other times it is not. And so either way, your model of how you think the world works is setting up the way that you're experiencing your time here. And in your business, it's setting up the whether or not you're having success, right? So Sometimes there might be a model of reality that's just unique to you because of your life experiences. So based on something that might have happened to you during your childhood, you have developed a model that said, okay, this is how the world works based on my experiences. And then other times we accept a lot of models of reality to be true because of the accumulated beliefs that were set in place by previous generations, things that kind of get accepted as being universally true. So for example, the way marriage works, a lot of societies have a, a kind of a united model of reality of how marriage works. It's supposed to be this, it's supposed to be this, it's supposed to be that. Or we have um, models of reality about how childhood education should look. You know, there's a classroom, there's one teacher, there's several students, there's books, there's this subject, there's these subjects. That, those, those are models of reality. It's the way we think it works. Um, the way that we view work is a model of reality. So like I said, for some people, they have their own based on what they've experienced. And then the masses have kind of some of these models of reality that we all accept as true. And we all oftentimes when it comes to business and when it comes to money, we all accept a lot of models to be true, even though they were put in place by people who lived in a much different setting than we live in today. And in the words of Steve Jobs, oftentimes these models were put together by people no smarter than you by people who weren't aware of the power of our minds or the unlimited potential for individuals to create. Um, a book that I really like is called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind by Vishen Lakhiani. And in this book, he talks about models of reality. He gives a ton of examples of really mind blowing shifts that people experience when their model of reality gets changed. And 
the one shift that really stuck out to me the most and drove this point home for me was he, uh, Vish and the author, he took a trip to the Amazon where he stayed with a tribe that had evolved over several generations with no contact with the outside world. So naturally their model of reality was gonna be drastically different from ours. And it was so different in fact that modern science would be baffled that these people survived because in our modern model of reality, we assume that everyone drinks water, right? We even consider this to be an absolute truth. But this tribe survived for generations without clean water. And in fact, they have a system where they take pond water, which is the closest thing they have, and they harvest and boil it and they mash up tree roots and they mix it with their saliva and they let it ferment for a few days so it becomes alcohol-like. And then they drink only this. This is the only thing they drink. So while drinking water is totally normal to us, it's actually gross and weird to people in this tribe. And so as Vishen says in the book, and what I want you to take away from, the, from this lesson and from this story is that our definition of what is normal is nothing more than what is programmed into us. So when it comes to business, there's no doubt that you're currently working within a certain model of reality, whatever it is, about what is normal. There's a certain way you think it all works, whether consciously or subconsciously. And your success or your lack of success has been shaped by whatever model of realities you are aligned with um, and how aligned you've been with them. And so today we're going to bend and shift and reconstruct your models of reality so that you can have a new expectation about how the world works in the context of business. And once you've done this, you're going to create a completely new, different experience. And so... <clears throat> In the rest of this lesson, I'm going to give you some of the building blocks for a model of reality that's going to be helpful, right? Because you're going to live in models of reality no matter what. They're either going to be empowering or disempowering. And so I'm going to give you some of, uh, some of the models that I find to be very helpful, some of the ways I think it works that are um, helpful to adopt as you move forward. And so when you're fully aligned with these new models, these energies, you're going to be supported in creating a business on your own terms. And I follow these as my own personal laws of business. And I'm not saying that you have to make them your own, but I'm sharing them with you because they've been very helpful for me. If you're sort of like internal compass um, or the reality creation laws that feel more aligned for you go against any of these, then by all means, create your own laws and create your own models of reality, create your own governing rules for how it all works. All right, so if any of the models of reality, the way that I find helpful to believe that it works, if any of these disagree with you, that's totally, totally fine. These are just suggestions for those of you who want to get successful doing things your own way. And so as I name a few of these new kind of rules of doing business, some of these new things, ways that we're going to start believing that it all works, these models, these structures that I'm going to give you, these beliefs, these ways that you're going to think it works, these are meant to kind of work with those universal laws. All right. And so as I name these, just go ahead and allow yourself to breathe them in and intend that your energy align with them if you choose. All right. So the first way to believe that it works, the first kind of model of reality that I would like to suggest is don't do something just because you think it will sell. Do what feels aligned for you. Right. So as you adopt this energy, as you adopt that this is the way it works, when I do something that's really aligned with me, that is what puts me in the energy of actually selling it. So when you put something together because you think it's what people want, but it sucks the life out of you or it isn't worth it for you or it doesn't align with any of your natural gifts and talents and desires, there's a big possibility that you're going to burn out, that you're going to hold slow energy around it so that you probably wouldn't even generate clients from it anyways. And then it's going to bring in the clients and the work that you don't even want. So doing what you think will sell, but that isn't aligned with you, it does get people profitable when they live in a model of reality that that's what they have to do, right? And this is, this is kind of mainstream consciousness. This is a lot of people, right? This is the model of reality that a lot of my attorney friends have. The way they think life works is that when you sacrifice your own life, you do work that's really and not enjoyable, that it, you work hard, you stress yourself to the max doing work that's not fun, then you'll get rewarded and make lots of money. That's the model of reality a lot of my attorney friends operate under. And that's the model of reality for a lot of people who believe 
I have to hustle and do all the things and sacrifice and go without and do things I don't like. And that's how I get successful. And that model, it works for people who are aligned with it, or it gets people money who are aligned with it. It doesn't necessarily mean their life works, but it gets them success if they're aligned with that model. But for me, when I got into the legal workforce, that model didn't work for me. So I made all the sacrifices, but I wasn't making the big money. And the reason for that is because I was so out of alignment with what I was doing. And somewhere inside me, I knew I didn't have to be doing all of that. I knew that there was a way to have joy and still make a living. And so you could say I was only doing the lawyer thing because just because I thought it would sell. You know, if we translated this into business terms, just because I thought it would sell. So, um, Oh, sorry. I, I, I just got a comment. I forgot we have an attorney on the, we have an attorney in the group. She agrees. Right. So I went into that field because I thought that would sell. I thought that would make me money, but it didn't align with me. So it didn't even work to make me money. Um, and from the outside, what's funny about that is that from the outside, the more widely accepted model of reality is that a lot of people think, and some even say to my face, that a lawyer makes way more money than an energy healer. That's, the, that's how a lot of other people think it works. And that might actually be true as a general rule, or you know, if you look at the majority of people, I have no idea, but it's not true for me, right? Because I've aligned with this kind of law of reality creation number one, I've aligned and adopted this model that success comes when I'm aligned. And so because this is my model of reality, I, I make about 13 times as, a, an energy, as an energy healer, what I made as an attorney in my best year. So since the work I do as a healer is aligned with me, I don't even really feel like I even work and I'm more successful. And what I found inside of my business, so I find this principle to be true even in my current business in High Watt Living. And I use this every time I have to pivot and upgrade my offerings. So there's a lot of things I could be doing right now to be making a lot of money, right? There's probably millions of dollars out there that I am not collecting because I'm not doing things. You know, there's a lot of things I could be doing to make a lot of money, things that would sell, but since they feel heavy and incongruent, they wouldn't even work for me. My, my energy that I would be holding would be repelling the business. I've, I've tried this before. I've tried kind of doing like, okay, this, I think this will do well. And I think this is what people want. This is what will sell. And it didn't even work for me because I wasn't congruent with it. Um, because what is aligned with me is what will actually sell because people are responding to how congruent you are. Um, and the best case scenario here is when you think something will sell and it just happens to feel good to you. So do what feels really aligned for you. And in the best case scenario, that is also something that you think will sell. Um, and next week, we're going to start building up your program and we're going to start building up your content. And all of this is going to be a pure expression of you. And you're going to be so congruent with it that the thing you build and the thing you're selling, you're going to be so congruent with it and so aligned with it that it's just naturally going to sell because of that energy that's in place. All right. So the next pillar in our new model of reality for a conscious business owner go ahead and take a deep breath in let that one integrate into your cells i do what's aligned for me and i know it will sell good and so feel yourself just letting your physical body integrate to a reality where as long as i do what's aligned for me it will sell Good. And so when you adopt this model of reality, what will happen is that if something's not selling, you're going to have to get to work on finding where you're not aligned with it. And I will get to that in a few more laws. That is a few laws down the road. All right. And so the next model of reality for a conscious business owner, number two is you want to create something, whether there's going to be two people seeing it or 200. So you create things because it's something inside of you that needs to be expressed or taught or passed on or conveyed or relayed. So think about it. Think about what you're offering to people or getting ready to offer or getting ready to put together. Think about how many books you've read, how many programs you've completed, how many mentors who've guided you and how many tools you've used. You have used a lot of different things to learn and master your skill that you're going to deliver to others. And only you have had that exact mix of training and knowledge. And you've used it all on yourself in some way or another, and you got a result that came from this particular blend of solutions and ideas. And so 
only you can fuse everything you've learned together so that you can help someone who needs that exact same delivery or formula or way that worked for you. Nobody else on this planet has had the same exact set of accumulation of knowledge and life experiences and trainings. Nobody else has the same exact ways and accumulation of all this as you. And so the way that you've experienced it, you get to kind of bottle that up, package it and offer it to other people who are really only going to have this thing land in the way that you are going to deliver it. So when I created and I built the energy upgrade program, my signature program back in 2015, I was pretty sure and very scared that it was only going to be me talking into a webinar at three people max, right? I, I had never enrolled anyone into a program and I had no evidence that anyone was going to sign up. And it was the biggest financial investment I had ever asked for from anyone who was going to be there. And so I knew there was a chance that nobody was even going to be there. I was thinking three was going to be hopeful, right? Um, but I made a commitment that I was going to deliver that program. I was going to deliver that information, not only because it was going to help people, but because it was a full on expression of my soul. It was an opportunity to kind of outline and organize my world, my knowledge, and put it out there in a way that made sense. Because people are out there and they're digesting a whole bunch of different stuff. And here you are, you have already digested it too, and you put it all together and you make it make sense. Only you are doing that with the, with the set, of, set of information that you have. And doing this was one of the most satisfying things I've ever done. And that program still serves people to this day. And it's been generating income for me for about five years. So when I conducted it live, I had only enrolled a handful of people. And to this day, it still serves people with no energy needed from me. So as you're getting ready to create something, whether for you that's a live program, informational materials, um, or a retreat, or whatever it is you're putting together, a couple of talks, as you're getting ready to create this, just remember that this is as much for you as it is for anyone else. Because there is a euphoria that comes when you've expressed what has been existing within you. It's one of the most beautiful feelings to pass on knowledge and information and to package it up in a way that only you can and to watch how, how much it really changes lives. So I get to experience it here in High Watt Business School, just organizing and writing out this content that you guys are gonna receive over the next 12 week, organizing out these meditations. Um, I got to experience this in intuition mastery when I trained coaches, you know, because all this information that you've learned, it, it gets retained and it brews and it collaborates with your energy and it lands in a certain way that ends up working for you. And so to get it out in the world is a high like none other. And it just kind of has the side effect of helping others and making you money. So let yourself detach from the pressure of having to fill up a program. The pressure is totally off. Um, like I said, I, when I, when I committed to doing my program in 2015, I just started building it and I said, okay, even if I have to just, if nobody signs up and I just invite my best friends and my aunts and uncles for free, that's just what it's going to be. I was doing it. But the thing is, is that after you make your first sale, you're going to have a moment of truth where you realize, okay, oh my gosh, I actually have to do this now. So what I want you to do, go ahead and place your hand on your heart right now. And I know many of you have different business models. Some of you guys are already rolling, already successful. Some of you guys have products. So feel into whatever this means for you when you make a vow and you're going to repeat after me and you're going to say, I am going to create this program or I am going to create these materials and make this offer no matter how many people show up. I am going to create this and make this offer no matter how many people show up. Just breathe in, let this land, right? So feel how the commitment's been made to yourself, to the universe. I'm going to, I am going to make this, create this no matter how many people show up. The commitment has been made and you're doing it. So we'll bust through the how and the resistance later. You'll figure out your offering next week. You'll figure out how to enroll people in the weeks after that. For now, if you choose, we just add this new rule to your model of reality. I create my offerings and my materials, whether there's going to be two people signing up or 200. I create things because it's something inside of me that needs to be expressed. It's something that the universe is trying to get onto the planet and I'm the only one who can really bring it here. That's why I'm doing it. 
Um, before we move on to number three, I want to give you guys an example of a coach I know who she has a signature program that she originally developed, I think like seven years ago. She delivered it to six people. It was a webinar series. It, six people signed up for $500 each. So she made $3,000. And that was a group program and that was the price point she needed to offer it at in order to get people enrolled in that point in her career, right? She hadn't proven herself. A lot of people didn't know who she was and the people who were resonating with her, that's what they had to pay. That's what it was worth to them. So she had $500 each and six people enrolled. And of course she recorded those uh, lessons, those webinars, and she now packaged them up and it's an audio program that she offers twice a year and thousands of people have done it and they pay $2,000 each. So she's made millions of dollars. So just know that this thing you're getting ready to build here in High Watt Business School, this program or product or service or whatever this new offering is that will come through for you, just the creation and organization of this is gonna bring you deep fulfillment in and of itself. And listen carefully, as you do it and you develop that deep fulfillment within yourself, that is the energy that is going to pull in the clients. When you feel that energy, that fulfillment of creating something that's in your soul, your aligned clients can feel you and they'll be attracted to your program. They'll be attracted to your products. They'll be attracted to whatever it is that you're building because you are in that alignment. Um, th as they're attracted to your program, that's not only going to happen now, but it's going to happen in the future. So Closing this loop for right now, you're focusing on creating something no matter how many people are going to be seeing it in the short term future. Just the process of expressing what's inside of you and organizing it out and feeling the joy of completing it, that in and of itself is going to contribute to the vibration that will pull in more people now and over time. And from that vibration, you're going to be able to take inspired action that pulls in and enrolls those clients. And so that brings me to number three. Go ahead and take a deep breath in, letting that last one land. And we're gonna get ready to accept or adopt a model of reality number three, which is that when I get my energy matched up with the most successful outcome, I can take inspired action from there. So you wanna get your energy matched up with the successful outcome and then take inspired action from there. So there's a huge misconception that you just need someone to tell you the right action steps or that you just need a point by point marketing plan or that you just need to hire someone who knows what they're doing and they'll put it all together and then boom, you're successful. And while you do need action steps, none of this is actually going to work for you unless your energy is already matched up with having the outcome you want. Because let's say, let's say you're so scared, you're not going to get any clients enrolled in your first program and that's the primary vibration you're holding. In that energy, in that vibration, you're going to be guided toward action steps and business plans that are going to keep you in the vibration you're holding, the one where there's no clients. So get your energy matched up with the successful outcome you want first. Take inspired action from there. Um, on the Q&A call the other day, someone asked, um, you know, how should we be prioritizing everything in this course? Should we be prioritizing meditations or the home play or the activities? And I wasn't terribly um, excited about my answer the other day, but what I would say now, <laughs> if, that answer, if that question came up today, what I would say is that your energy is your priority. Get your energy matched up with the successful outcomes and then take inspired action from there. And the thing is, you won't even have to budget time for taking action. You won't have to say, okay, I'm doing six o'clock to eight o'clock. I'm writing this, that, and the other. What'll happen is that when your energy is matched up to where you're going, time appears out of nowhere. Your schedule opens up. You'll be sitting around doing something and you'll say, okay, this amazing idea just came through. I have to sit down and work on it, right? Inspiration will strike because you're in the energy of where you're going. And so the thing that will get you there, the action steps will start to come naturally and you won't have to take action steps from a place of, oh, I have to be doing this. I should be doing this. You're taking them from a place of like, oh, well, I'm already matched up to this outcome. So here's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Because right now there's probably a hundred different ways that you could go out and get a new client today, right? You could, you could, there's a hundred different ways. There's a, a hundred different avenues, maybe even a thousand. So how do you know which way is going to be the best fit for you? Um, you know, when you're aligned with the successful outcome already, you'll just be intuitively guided to taking the action steps that will actually work. So it's less about the specific action steps and it's more about the energy 
what will happen is that when your energy is so lined up with the outcome, A, you're going to be guided toward the thing that will work. And then B, a lot of different things will work to get you to the same outcome because your energy is already in the vibration of the outcome. All right. So go ahead and take a deep breath in. Let this model of reality sink into your cells. As I match my energy up with the most successful outcome, I can, and I take inspired action from there, I become successful. I'm just going to breathe that in. Noticing how I don't have to stress about the action steps. I do have to take them, but I don't have to stress about them. Good. All right. Let that integrate. And then I'm going to move us on to number four, which is you don't want to copy anyone directly. All right. So other people are using a formula. Other people who are successful, I should say, are using a formula um, that works for them. It's unique to them. Right. So that formula is not going to work for you unless you have the same exact model of reality as them, which you don't. All right. So it's really easy to look at someone who does work that's similar to yours and has massive success with their marketing strategies and to think that you need to be doing what they're doing. Right. But the reason that they're having success is because they're doing something that's a hundred percent aligned with them. They are in their full authenticity, their full power, their full alignment with their most effective action steps. And so when you directly copy them, you're not in your own authenticity. You're not in your own power. You're not in your own alignment. You're in theirs. And so I encourage you to see what everyone else is doing and to be inspired by it and to use everything that works for you, but you don't want to copy it directly, right? You want to make it yours. So for example, when I first started working as an energy healer, I wanted to host a group clearing webinar so I could use it to attract some clients. And since my only frame of reference for a group clearing was the way that my mentor did it, I thought that that's how I had to do a group clearing. I thought that's how it worked. And after doing a few, I started to ask myself, okay, how can I change these so that so that I can get the most people aligned with their new reality? How can I change these so that they are more authentic to me and aligned with me in the best way that I think works? And once I did that, I kind of developed my own formula that I used for group clearings from there on out. And I made them work for me. So I made them 60 minutes instead of 90. I added in a chunk of time for participants to isolate and feel emotions so they could burn that out, which wasn't something that my mentor did directly. And then I kind of just created my own way of filling in with a new energy at the end of the calls to seal the cuts and ensure that each person who cleared energy in my webinar would become an energetic match for the life that they wanted moving forward. And so even though my group clearings were inspired by my mentor and relatively similar, because she was, that was the only way I knew how they could go. Um, I then took what worked for me and then I developed a new way of doing them that was unique to me and to what I thought was the best and most efficient way to do them. And so it required a little more work and writing, but that was okay. I love, I love the way that my clearings were set up. They are, you know, I think they still hold up. And the way that I do them and structure them isn't necessarily going to work for you. So I know a lot of people in this program are energy healers or coaches. The way that I structure my calls isn't necessarily going to work for you. You're going to have a different way of doing webinars and lessons and clearings and meditations that is unique to you. So um, for example, I have a friend who's a coach and she hosts webinars that she calls transmissions. And she just simply channels the words and vibrations that will serve her clients in the moment and that is what's authentic to her. So it magnetizes her ideal audience. All right, so when you learn strategies and formulas that your energy is drawn to, um, for instance, I'll be teaching you some speaking formulas later in this course. When you are attracted or when you learn those, you wanna use the parts that work for you and you wanna ditch or revise the parts that don't. So for example, when I started working with my business coaches back in 2015, all of their strategies and methods were proven to work with a lot of success, a lot of success. Um, and my energy was aligned with, with most of their strategies. So I used all the strategies that they were giving me and I had a lot of success with them. However, I did make one little tweak because anytime something doesn't feel right to me, I revise it or I ditch it. Right. So when, when they taught me how to do a strategy session, um, I used their enrollment script and then I kind of shifted it to suit me, right? I ditched the part where I was supposed to flirt with objections because that just wasn't for me. And flirting with objections, you know, when a, when a potential client is 
saying they want to do something, but I can't because of this, or I can't because of this, I can't because of this. Flirting with objections means that you kind of just chat with them and kind of see what you guys can work out and see if you can help them get through those objections. And that is not something that is wrong, right? It just wasn't congruent for me. And I'm sure I've left a lot of money on the table by not doing that, by not flirting with objections, but my energy is so out of alignment with doing it that it probably wouldn't have worked out anyways. And it just would have left me and the person I was talking to with a weird, bad feeling. So because it wasn't aligned with me, it wasn't my jam. So for some people, flirting with objections is fun and it's empowering. And I know that for a lot of people in that course that I took, they, they started to master how to flirt with objections and they made a lot of sales because of it. And in fact, if, if that business coach hadn't flirted with my objections, I would have never done their program in the first place, right? Like mastering flirting with objections is really an effective tool if you're congruent with it. Um, so it can be empowering and it really truly does get people out of their own way when they want to say yes, but they have patterns and programs running that are making them say no. So learning how to do it effectively can be the difference between a sale and no sale. But and when it's done with integrity and a genuine desire to help the person to get over their junk and enroll in something that they want to say yes to, it's a great skill. Um, all I'm simply saying is that you've got to do what's aligned for you. Don't directly copy anyone else just because something works for them. I actually follow a woman on Instagram who's a coach and she's a really, really good coach. She really understands reality creation and she authentically delivers content that's making her a ton of money. And she's a really, really public coach. She's a public figure coach. And what I notice is that because she has so many followers and she's so freaking successful and so good at what she does, what happened is that she has tons of copycats out there. There's a ton of people trying to do things her exact same way and it doesn't work for them. And that's because she's doing the action steps that are aligned with her. They're authentic to her. They fit in her model of reality. All right. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, as you put together your business, and your action steps and your marketing strategies, make sure it's not just a full on copycat of some, someone else, what they're doing. So bring your own vibration into it, adjust what you're doing to fully fit you. And if you need to change your beliefs and emotions in order for things to work, as you change those action steps, do that because you have to be feeling good about what you're doing and how you're doing it for anything to even work. All right. And so that's going to lead into number five, which is, when there is an aspect of your business that you hate or an aspect of your business that isn't working, you want to create something new that is aligned. So just breathe that one in. When there is an aspect of your business that you don't like or that isn't working or that feels stagnant, um, just create something new that is aligned. And so I'll go more into this. <laughs> so when you're doing something in your business that you hate, Think about whether, so you're always in an energy that's either attractive or repellent, right? So if you're doing something in your business that you hate, or if you're in the vibration of something's not working, notice how that creates an energy that is repellent to your clients, right? So the law of attraction has a counterpart, and that is the law of repulsion, which states that the more magnetically attractive you become to that which is aligned the more repulsive you become to that which is not aligned. And so I go more into this in this week's recorded activation. So you'll get a little bit more background on that, but just kind of know that as you're, as when, when you're in the vibration of something in your business being out of alignment with you or not being something that you enjoy or something that's not working, just kind of create something new that is aligned. So when you're doing things in your business that you're not aligned with, you're not really in that sweet spot where you're magnetizing aligned clients and repelling misaligned clients. When you're doing things in your business that you're not aligned with or that you hate, this brings down the vibration of the whole. Every single time I've ever done something because I thought it was a good tactic or I thought it would be what people wanted, it fell flat. Even if it was a good idea and well executed and it delivered value, what was happening is that if I hated it or if I didn't like it or if it was incongruent with me, it didn't sell. It didn't work because people are responding to how congruent I am. So you don't even always have to be aware right up front that it's something that's not working and that's something you don't like. But when you find that there's something in your business that you hate or something that's not working, whenever I'm experiencing some stalling in my finances or my enrollments or if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, 
my go-to questions that I ask just to kind of start getting my, getting it all figured out energetically. The, what I ask is first thing I ask is, am I hundred percent excited to conduct this program or deliver this service? So I ask myself, am I excited to conduct this? And if not, what parts am I dreading? Right? So just get clear on where you're not, where, what you're dreading, right? Because this, um, when this comes up, this will show you where you need to clear some blocks and then rearrange things as well. And I will say more about that in a minute, but that's the first question I ask myself, am I hundred percent excited to, to do this? And if not, what am I dreading? And that'll just give you some clarity on where you can make some either clearings or you can revise some things. Another place to check is I ask myself, is there somewhere in my personal life that's out of alignment with what I'm teaching? So am I practicing what I preach? And, you know, this is one of those questions where, you know, if I'm out of alignment with anything I teach and anything I preach, how can I be a stand for my clients to use the tools that I teach, right? So that's going to stall enrollments for me if I'm not practicing what I preach. Um, another question I ask is, am I doing this because I think people will like it or pay for it? Or is it something I actually want to do? All right. So these are questions that I'd ask myself just to kind of get clear on my energy, right? Why I might not be aligned. So those are some questions to start asking yourself to get clear on where you might be out of alignment. All right. Um, an example for me was doing Facebook live videos. So I used to do Facebook live videos for my energy upgrade uh, group program when I wanted to do them and when I felt inspired with a topic, which was seldom, right? But when I did them, they would get a really great reaction because, you know, I just, if something was really on the tip of my tongue and I needed to say it, I would get on and I would say it and people would often give me feedback of like, I feel like you're talking to me, you know, like I feel, I feel like that was just for me. And so it was guided, it was fun and I enjoyed it. And then there was a brief time a few months ago where I started to do some Facebook lives because I wanted to be more consistently visible for the people in my group. And when I did this, they weren't as engaging because I was operating from a should, you know, I, I should make these Facebook lives for a certain outcome, right? For me, the certain outcome was getting people clear on what high watt business school really was so they could know if they wanted to do it or not. And it just came across, it was, it was inauthentic for me and it was out of alignment for me. And so I quickly stopped doing that. And I just said, what would be in alignment for me? Like, what would I be excited to do? What would be in alignment with, um, you know, what I actually want to do? And so I decided to create an Instagram account and deliver some messages there. And I do it when I feel like it and I don't do it according to a schedule or formula. And so that's, that's kind of one way to, you know, something that wasn't working, like I shifted it and created something new that was aligned. So if there is something in your business that you hate or that isn't working, create something new that is aligned. And how do you do that? Right? So the, the questions I just gave you, they get you clear on, you know, where you might be out of alignment, but what do you do when you realize you're out of alignment? And that brings us to number six. And that is that when anything is feeling stalled, incongruent or unsuccessful, you're going to do two things. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for your energetic programming and clear your junk. You're going to clear your beliefs and patterns, all your junk, right? So when something's not working, first off, clear your junk. And then the second thing you're going to do is rearrange some logistics until the energy feels aligned. Okay. So an example of this for me was conducting high watt live. So that was my signature live event. The first year I did it, well, a version of it <laughs> back in 2014, it scared the absolute crap out of me. So you could say that I was feeling stalled and incongruent with doing the event. My soul was guiding me to do it, but I was really incongruent with doing it because I was terrified of speaking on stage. Um, and the public speaking aspect of it made it sound not fun. And so in that sense, I was incongruent. So the first thing I did was I looked for my energetic programming and I cleared out my junk around public speaking. So I did the first thing I looked into my energetic program. Why am I feeling incongruent? Um, and I started to clear all my junk around public speaking. And so, gosh, I, this is so long ago, it feels like, but I'll never forget actually getting on stage the morning of my first event and being shocked that I wasn't having a panic attack because the stage fright wasn't an issue for me after I cleared my stuff. 
at that time. So um, I took that first step. I cleared the programming that had me out of alignment with doing an event. And then I did the second piece um, because another piece of, of this, of why I was feeling stalled and incongruent with doing an event is because I wanted to conduct a professional and impressive live event, right? But since that was so expensive, I was going to have to charge people a bunch of money to be there. And this is 2014. I had just quit my job and spent $30,000 on coaching and had no idea if I was going to sell anything. So I didn't have money to work with back then. So um, I hadn't realized it at first, but the thought of spending you know, on stage and lighting and all the fun stuff that would make it an impressive event I hadn't realized it, but that was making me feel incongruent with hosting the event. But once I realized that that was stalling my progress with committing to hosting it, I just did this second part of law number six. I rearranged my logistics until it all felt aligned. So while I would have loved to make a good impression with lights and stage backgrounds, the thought of how much that was going to cost, not only for me, but to the people that I would have to charge admission to, the thought of how much that cost kind of, it, it, it made the whole endeavor feel not worth it. So I, it kept me feeling incongruent. So what I did was I adjusted the energy and logistics until the whole thing felt aligned for me. And so this is what allowed me to actually make that first event happen. So, you know, I rearranged all the, I rearranged that logistic, probably some others as well until it felt congruent and aligned. Um, and I'm, and I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I have a good friend who she spent tons and tons of money on her first ever event. And it would have been incongruent for her not to. So, um, you know, the thing I'll say over and over in high watt business school is that your best and most effective business strategies and plan are going to be plans are going to be the ones that are most authentic and congruent and aligned for you and your gut, your instinctual reactions to things will give you those answers. All right. So when anything is stalled or incongruent or unsuccessful, First, look into the energetic programming and clear that, and then start to rearrange logistics until the energy feels aligned. So we're just relying on what feels congruent. And anytime we don't feel that, we clear the program, clear the programming, and adjust adjust logistics until it all lines up for us. And this hasn't historically been a path to success for a lot of business owners. In the past, it was all about, you know, trust the system, push forward. If you fail, keep trying, right? But I'm willing to bet that this, you know, law number six, that this kind of will be more recognized as a path to success as more of society ascends into a higher level of awareness and 5D consciousness and can start existing outside of outdated models of reality. Um, you know, when you're working with this kind of this model of reality that when anything is stalled incongruent or unsuccessful and you, you lift off the programming and you change the logistics, when you live inside of this model of reality, that this is how it works then you're always going to be guided to where you need to be. You're always going to be able to make it work when you work with this belief of how it works. Right. And as a bonus, you know, this starts to create an attractive charge for aligned buyers because when you get your energy cleaned up and you, you, you get the logistics aligned with you again, you get in that energy of pulling in aligned buyers. All right. And so Back to my example of um, hosting High Watt Live. So eventually, five years and seven events, High Watt Live stopped being fun for me. I, I picked up a whole new set of a whole new set of incongruence and uh, whatnot. But it stopped being fun for me, and so I took a <clears throat> guided break from it. And I can feel right now. I can kind of feel that there's another High Watt Live that wants to happen again, probably in the next year or two. And so moving forward, I'm going to go through this process. First, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to list out, okay, what is it about doing this event that makes it feel not fun for me? Uh, what are the beliefs I hold and the aspects of the event that I believe to be true that prevent me from getting excited about it and being congruent with it and, you know, um, all of that. So I will make a list of all these things and then I'll separate that list into two categories. The first thing will be the beliefs and judgments that I need to clear and the second thing will be the things that I need to shift about the way I do the event. So as an example, I guess, uh, to make a, sh if I wanted to do high watt, live high watt live again, I would have to make a shift in some logistics. For example, I, if I was ever going to do a live event again, I, I, I can no longer comp tickets for people's friends anymore. Right. Um, I want to have my coaches available on site so they can do private sessions with people who have their junk up and want a private session right away. 
um, you know, because I don't want people taking all their stuff out on my admin team or me. And so I would need to do that. I would need to make that logistical change to make it worth it for me. Um, there would be some, another logistic that would need to change is that I would need to plant some seeds at the beginning of the event, the event that lets the audience know what I will and won't tolerate, right? Those are actual logistics and things that I can shift that will make the event congruent for me again. It'll make it fun for me. So for you, changing up the energy of something might include, um, changing the actual offer. So changing what's offered, maybe changing the time period, changing the price, maybe setting up boundaries. I had to learn that one as I, as I went, I, I kind of went into the coaching world just thinking, all right, cool, everybody, it's a free for all. And then I quickly learned, okay, you need boundaries. They need to know where their energy ends and mine begins, right? That makes it a lot more fun and congruent for me. Um, changing up the energy and the logistics might involve delegating certain tasks. Um, or hiring people, hiring out some of the tasks, um, maybe making bundles. Um, you know, all of these are great ways that you can shift things around until you feel aligned with doing your work. It's amazing how little tweaks are going to put you fully into alignment and excitement and being, being in that excitement and alignment is what attracts your clients. So another example of this is I hosted an activation series earlier this year. I think uh, many, if not all of you were invited as well and may have been there too. Um, and this activation series was originally going to be six weeks for $400. And I just kept feeling like I just didn't want to do it. And I almost got panicky about it and wanted to call off all of my plans for, for this year. And it didn't make any sense to me why that felt so heavy to me. It just did. And so then I just kind of shifted my energy and I thought, okay, what does it feel like if this is four weeks? Okay, what does this feel like if I add in two bonus meditations? Okay, still didn't feel totally right. And then now what does it feel like if I underprice this so that everyone can join? And then all of a sudden it felt light again. It felt good and I was excited to do it. So that's something you're gonna wanna do. You're just gonna play with the energy. You know, even if you don't know intellectually what the logistical change can be, um, you wanna just kind of play with the energy, feel into what it feels like. Okay, if I make this change, how does this feel? right? So when anything is feeling heavy or not working or misaligned, first, you're going to clear any of your thoughts, beliefs, and limitations that are coming up. And then second, you're going to adjust and rearrange your logistics until it feels congruent for you. All right. So that is the last model of reality creation to adopt. So when anything is stalled or incongruent or not working or unsuccessful, Make a list of all your perceived reasons why it's not working or not successful, and then separate those into the energetic beliefs and patterns and clear those. And then when it comes to the logistics, just rearrange your logistics until the energy feels aligned. All right. So your model of reality in your business is, again, it's the way you think it all works. So when you think it all works a certain way, that's how it will work for you. And some of the, the six kind of, you know, laws of reality creation that are, that you just aligned with, or the six kind of models of reality of how you're going to believe that it all works from here on out. Those are just some examples that when you think it works that way, so it will be right. Your model of reality will shift and the universe will shift so that your world works according to that model of reality. All right. I hope you enjoyed this lesson from High Watt Business School. Uh, if you want to check out the rest of High Watt Business School so you can align your business with your own energy and pull in lots of clients and customers, you can go to highwattliving.com slash business and you can check out more details there. All right. I will see you in the next podcast.